primary ignition. This is Star Wars. Look out! Core World News. You may fire when ready. From the bright center of the galaxy, I'm Grax Kondak, and I'll listen to Core World News. Your holiday news service providing in-depth coverage of the latest stories from every sector of the galaxy. Welcome to a reading Rathdar special and the debut of our High Republic segment, Jedi Jamboree. We now go live to the CWN newsroom to join your host, Ben Grant Adam, for their review of Star Wars High Republic Convergence by Zoraida Kadu. All right. Uh, thanks very much, Grex. Welcome, everyone, to another week of uh, Core World News. This one's yeah. super hype because we're just doing High Republic hard uh, yep. today. And uh, really trying to round up everything that's happened in the beginning of phase two, which is all very, very exciting. Um, and we're going to, but we're going to focus on covering convergence. We'll do that whole book spoiler filled, um, which is <laughs> relatively on time for us, actually. We're, we're actually getting, oh, yeah. How about that? Uh, uh, we'll also talk about uh, the young reader uh, quest for the hidden city. Um, and then, yeah, the comics are amazing, um, but we'll get there. Uh, Grant, did you have a little, uh, little summary, a doodah we, there? We were going to read the publisher's summary, but then, you know, I had just jotted yeah. one down as I wrote, read this book, just, I just encapsulated it all for myself, oh. but, uh, here, here's it. what I got out of it. Uh, when a ceasefire is threatened and tensions run high between the warring worlds of Iram and Irano, Jedi peacekeepers, a, a chancellor of the Republic and an infamous playboy and once follower of the path intervene. The Jedi and Republic officials desire peace, while the agents of the path desire a secret weapon being developed by one of the monarchies. That is that is kind of what I got. It's it's broad. Yeah. But there's a lot that goes on. There's also a yeah. marriage pact that's a major plot point in the story. Uh, but uh, that's kind of a, a big reveal. So let's let's start earlier in in the uh, in the book and sort of like, or maybe even share our initial thoughts. What were your sure reactions? Yeah. I mean, well, firstly, it's interesting that it's Iram and Irano. So these are two planets that are stuck in orbit together with a moon in between. Is what I got. Yep. Maybe the moon yeah. sort of does a figure same. eight thing around all of them. But uh, it sounds like it's in between. They share the same moon, which is cool. Um, would be a good place for a piece. It's up. a it's a major waypoint on the uh, the hyperlanes. So yes. like, right, it's a it's a it's a heavily traveled area, I guess. Right. The galaxy. Right. But it's interesting because we saw it in phase one a lot. It was there was actually they were around. That's where um, Starlight Beacon was parked for most of phase one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's interesting. They're going back to the same geographic location. Um, I, you know, I always like to go bigger and they are introducing a bunch of new planets. Um, but, yeah, it's interesting that they're. it's just an interesting call. But this book finally gets into the the core of of what the cultures are like on these two planets and i, and I adore it it's 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 yeah. got a lot of i love the romeo and julietness to it and it's it, it felt a little yeah. bit like uh lost stars the claudia gray book really totally I, yeah for me for me this evoked one uh sci-fi series amongst all others and that is dune yeah dune yes. came to mind very dune like book. yeah <laughs> yep uh, yeah Basically, the Irino culture and the Bane Blades and the desert and the Scorpion. Yeah, and being like, yeah, and yeah, the being drill lost ships. to the desert with each other yeah. for a while. And, and like, then even yeah, like kind of yeah. sprawling. Yeah. Some names, yeah. even Iram or Irino kind of evokes, you know, Princess Irulan and just some of the naming uh, caught on to me sure. as well. And yeah. then um, even Erasmus City. I mean, if you've read those sort of prequel <laughs> books, um, Erasmus is one of the kind of crazy machines in that universe. Um, mm. Yeah, so, yeah, I don't know if these are intentional nods, but I felt a lot of Dune sort of overlap, but I welcome that. It almost felt like a digestible yeah. Dune <laughs> in a lot of ways. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I will always argue that Dune is digestible, and everything that comes after Dune is wild. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it makes it less digestible, but yeah, 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 super enjoyable. Is, is more digestible. Like, it's pretty straightforward. I'm like, I, yeah. first time I read that was like two years ago. I'm like, it's yeah. almost like a young adult novel. Like, you know what I mean? Like, no, it, it kind of works. One. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then and then boy does it go in yeah. other directions, which are wonderful and weird. Um, yeah, my reaction is similar. Like I started this book, and it's like the first I had to check this to see what happened. The first four chapters, I'm like, okay, all right, I'm enjoying this. It's well written, but it's kind of your typical like world building. I could see the Romeo Juliet thing kind of being set up, and I'm like, all right, I see my major players. We got our Jedi. We got this. And then in chapter five, and we're going to talk about main characters, specific characters, I'm sure, in a moment, but I just have to name yeah. him first. Then we meet Axel Greylock. Yes. And that's when I'm like, 
what yeah. is this book? What but is we this have book? This, like, uh, we have this so super good. like very like high fantasy almost setting, and then suddenly you're cutting to to Coruscant in in a gambler's den, and you have this like Playboy, and I'm like yeah. now, and and you're just waiting for him to start interacting with these other characters, and I'm yeah. like. Now I'm sold. And not because necessarily he's the best character. Uh, spoiler, I'm going to argue he's the best character in the yeah. entire book. But more that like, oh, this is going to be different, right? Like just adding this one little element into this is going to is going to really mix things up. And I was yeah. really enjoying that. He's definitely one of the most dynamic sort of, I would argue, like antagonists that we've we've had thus far in the High Republic. Uh, yeah, just, just, a complicated character. Yeah, yeah, he's got this crushing memory of losing his dad and he blames the Jedi for it and falls in love with it or I guess has feelings for a Jedi in this book. And there's sort of this fun relationship. I would, I would almost argue that Gela Natai and mm -hmm. uh, Axel great, uh, gray Lark sort of form the best characters of the book. That relationship yeah. is so fascinating yeah. to yeah. me. Um, just the, yeah, the, the idea of both of them interacting, given his feelings about the Jedi and given her feelings about, you know, just uh, attachment and sort of him pulling her out of that for, I guess, a dance at the end of the book and things like that. It's just, that was really, really fun. And I couldn't, I just yeah. wanted more of that story. You know, yeah. that, yeah. that was interesting to me. Which so, yeah. I, I think we're going to get, because that's the interesting thing about phase two, because phase one yeah. started so neat. Like we knew who our main protagonists were, like the, like the three, const the people, the three constellation, and we had our main bad guy. Like we knew that, I think within like a couple of chapters yeah. of book one. The infographic this book really is. Helped. The infographic I, well, really I helped. Think there if is anyone's big, listening who can make an infographic for phase two, uh, that'd be super helpful. Thank but you. part of me loved this because I, I got halfway through this book and I'm like, I don't know what phase two is. Like, I, yeah. what? where are we going? Who's our yeah. big guy, big bad guy? Who's our yeah. good guys? I don't know. And I'm kind That's of enjoying true. it unfolding. Yeah. So I read the or half the book today, but it, it actually, oh, wow. looking at my Kindle at like 48% through is where the marriage pact happened. So it's like. Yeah. It's like a, a character development. There's all these disparate characters. You see both sides of the, you know, Civil War. Um, and, you know, you meet the Jedi and then you meet Alex Greylark, which is yeah, totally coming out of left field. And then, yeah, uh, and then they come together and then and then the book entirely changes and goes on this like wild um, adventure. But uh, right. Yeah, really great. Um, yeah, there's, there's Perrin vibes with Axel Grail. <laughs> Just Perrin slight, slight Perrin vibes. Yeah. Yeah, uh, definitely. Except like, like not a total sleepbag, and actually an adventurer and daring, and sort of, uh, I would say, uh, doing more action-packed sort of things. Yeah, but it's like it's fun. You know, Perrin. We don't know why he is so horrible to Mon Mothra and everyone else, oh, but just bad. like, Perrin. yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Sorry, Ben, I can see you're confused looking. I was trying to clue you in without ha calling you out. So I really tried to subtly get yeah, in there, like, but you're still like, oh, that parent. I, I was trying to help. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I can see the look. Um, the parent. But, Come on. But I will say I will Good say point. what I what I like about it is is Axel is just like. Shot. Yeah, exactly. I love how um, complex he is. Like I, I will we'll spoil. We'll talk about the ending. Yeah, I still don't know how I feel about Axel. But even after this entire book, like like. I kind of am rooting for him. <laughs> I'm just going to yeah. say it right now. Like, yeah, I, yeah, mm -hmm. I don't know. I think he may have been corrupted by the path. I think so. When we talk about not yeah. knowing where the threat yeah. is in this new oh. phase of higher public books, I think anyone associated with the path is uh, that's, that's sort of the red flag or telltale sign yeah. that this may yeah. be an obstacle for the Jedi. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so if right, you yeah, haven't so. read Path of De Deceit, um, you should. It's fantastic. That yeah, was the so first good. book yeah. of Phase Two. We covered it um, a couple weeks ago, and yeah, and that yeah, the Path of Deceit is the path of the open hand and the mother, and she's like di dispelling the Force all the time. She's like, oh no, the the, the Jedi abuse the Force, but she's definitely using like dark Sith abilities to control people's like to do infatuation or something, right? Yeah. I she's not so. like she's yeah. a cult. She's a cult leader, the mother. Yeah. But like, don't you think she's I think she's yes. using the force to actually. Yeah, I think she is. This. Yeah. Because everyone talks about her the whole same thing. Way. Yeah, yeah. She's like heroin. People just like once they talk to her, it's just like they are her thralls. Yeah. She Especially does. Especially because. Yeah. Spoiler yeah. alert. She does like there's something a physical attribute changes about her in the path of deceit after a sort of mm -hmm. like force moment. So like, yeah. yeah, that could be construed as she used the, yeah. the dark side. Yeah. The the other thing that 
phase two seems to be about, and we'll talk about this when we get to the comics for sure, is is widening the world of force users. Right. Oh, it, yeah. It seems to be a Ooh, big part yeah. of this is talking about it's not just Jedi. There's a lot of other force users. And so I think that makes sense. Right. We're not this is not a story about Jedi versus Sith. Right. It's a story about the force and the Jedi and how they encounter other people who use the force. Yeah. Which is yeah. great. And we're actually getting into that sort of theological territory that I've mm -hmm. you know, always <laughs> wanted out of Star Wars. Yeah, I thought, I thought so about exciting. It, right? it's it's really yeah. exciting. And like. I think, you know, the comics, I think what Kevin Scott's doing, the higher public main run is like amazing. I can't wait to see what unfolds there. And I think we know there's going to be some conflict ahead uh, on Jedha. So that's exciting. Like that's. Yeah. Everything's pointing towards Jedha now. Hence the Jedha Jamboree or Jamboree. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, right on. So back to the book. Any other. So other characters here. I mean, uh, what about. Uh, Ziri, yeah, uh, we could talk about her. So she is on the Montagues, I mean, the Aranos uh, side. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the Aaliyah, Desert Planet. Atreides, yeah. Yeah, Atreides. <laughs> yeah, I mean, no, sorry, uh, Ziri. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, the sharks. Yeah, uh, yeah. so she's so, um, a general and a warrior, warrior culture. She's a princess. Um, yeah, we get her in a space battle, the sort of, you know, some early POVs with her. But um, she's cool. So and then, and then her opposite number is very different um, on the. Uh, Irida, is that it? Uh, uh, Fan, Fantu Zen of Iram. Yeah, Fantu Zen. What's of, the name? Uh, of the yeah, Iram. Iram. I always forget yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I know. Yeah. And, Which Iram uh, is, I guess, the oceanic sort of world. Yes. And Ir yeah. Irano is the desert sort of dry cliffs and bluffs. Canyons. Whatnot. We have yet another orphan here. Um Fantu Zen is yeah. adopted. He was a uh, street, you know, grew up in poverty, uh, family died, and then uh, was ultimately rescued by uh, the uh, two women that were leading the uh, country. The two. Uh, That's right. Uh, yeah. Uh, queen and her consort of. Uh, like of, Adriala and Odelia, I believe. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Right. Those right, two. right. Yeah. Queen and queen regent. Um yeah, the the two queens, uh, they adopted him, uh, and then he is the heir to the 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 monarchy of Iram. He's sort yeah. of the heir apparent. Um, yeah, and he saves uh, Ziri early. There's sort of a connection there. Um, that's that was cool. That was it. Seemed yeah. like they generally liked insane. each other. It seemed like they generally respected and honored each other and dug each other's vibe. Uh, I would say so. Yeah. Because your really pack didn't feel like sick to your yeah. stomach, like Andor level. It didn't feel like it was. It was all right. It seemed like on their own volition, they were they wanted the peace for their both their uh, people. Right, which is very unique. I feel like you don't. You know, they played this up, and it's always like, oh, we want to be together, but our parents will let us. But then it was actually, but being together was the best thing. And they, I thought that um, the author really organically brought these two together to the extent where like when they made the pact and everyone got excited and they started making plans and like, yeah, um, I was like crying. I was like, this is great. Like, I was so happy. I'm like, why can't the book just end here at 48% of the way through? Cause I'm no, like, Oh yeah. no, so much. I'm like, are these, they, this is good. They're going <laughs> to die. Like everyone's going to yeah. die. Yeah. 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 This is like, that's, I have about as much faith in higher public trend oceans. Yeah. We got it. As I do with George Martin. <laughs> right. man. Like, yeah. I just look at it as like game of Thrones. Like, it's just like, don't get attached to your character. Cause winter is coming and all of your favorite characters are going to die. But, uh, yep. you know, uh, so that was what I was worried about going into the second half of this. Of this yeah, book. I kind of love when um, there's like a campfire moment in the book when I think Fentuzen, Ziri and Gela Nati and uh, I want to say Axel's there too, but they all just talk about like the histories of their worlds, like all together. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah. and Gela talks about the history of like the Jedi and sort of these creation stories and stuff like that. That was, that's, that's what excites me about this new phase and sort of the ex exploration of all these different, um, you know, followers of the force and in, and then religions and sort of ideologies that are sprouting up and that are being finally being explored. And it was so cool to hear about Krell and sort of like the first God of Iram and like, yeah, uh, that whole story. And then when Gela talks about like a Jedi who wanted to see the entirety of the universe and like was told to like walk on the seam of the, the galaxy, I was like to discover its many mysteries or something like that. I was like, this not only sounds like, you know, Luke Skywalker in the interstitial period before he started his temple, like 
Like yeah. this sounds like so many other fun, you know, thing like Krona from DC. If you if you read the DC comics, like it's just yeah. there's mm-hmm. so much fun stuff right there with Gela and what she's talking about in the histories of the Jedi that I just hope we dive, you know, more into that sort of stuff. I, I really like the religions and the the sh- the belief systems that are being talked about in 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 the story. I thought that was cool. Agreed. Yeah. Yeah. It's a beautifully written book and really complex, oh, yeah. and it's like. It's really a good read. I didn't know like what I was getting into. It took me, you know, I kept sitting down with it at various times. But then once I got into it, um, I just mowed through it. And it's really, it's very intricate. It talks about a lot of concept, uh, uh, complicated issues politically um, and personally. And then, yeah, like you said, the, the, the sense of history and all that. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, Jella or Gela. So you call her Gela. My headcanon was Jella. All right. I think I, I, like, I, I like, did. I did. If it, if it what did you do? I did. I'm gonna respectfully books. stick with Gela, but all right. I I did audiobook, <laughs> yeah, so I can. I can. It's Gela. Uh, it is Gela. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Because there's yeah. a there's that one moment where she's announced into the fighting pits. Um, she gets thrown into a fighting pit and she's announced oh, for the with fight. Dario. Yeah, 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 with yeah. Dario. yeah. And uh, and I was like, please screw up her name. Please screw up her name. Please screw up her name. I just love that bit. Like when you like your first time on stage, they mess up your name. It happened to a friend. Yeah on his first like open mic and i was just like <laughs> and then we still laugh about it today and sure enough they called her a uh, jelly natal or something like yeah. that. yeah and uh and i was like dario so better been a dario uh naharis sort of like uh, yes watch, right? I, I was like yeah it has to be <laughs> yeah. I, I got that too anywho yeah um, she i think has the coolest lightsabers uh maybe ever. yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're made out of black moonstone uh mm-hmm. And they're like you know cool um and then she has I mean, yeah that's uh, awesome violet blades um yeah and i was like oh those are they're, the, those are the ones they're pretty great and you can see them illustrated on the cover of convergence like like it oh. really is it's on it's on yeah. the cover like she's on the cover and, okay, it's, cool. and it I'll looks like on that. they're very like they're very understated i really like them because it has that black hilt and like a little mm-hmm. bit gold and that mm-hmm. violet and i'm like you know they're probably not going to make those lightsabers, but that might be the ones I want. Like those I, yeah. same thing. Um, wow. Yeah. Those are gorgeous. They're really like art that she uses is. Yeah. That's cool. yeah. I like I she was like a awesome. shell. Awesome. awesome. I, I, I also, Hey, can I, uh, can I break the timeline and talk about the next book in this series? Uh, sure. Uh, what's it called? Yeah. What's it called? It's, it's, it's called cataclysm, uh, by Lydia Kang. Yeah. Um, so the reason why I'm talking about oh, this is we're talking about cover. I know, I know why you're bringing art. this up. Hmm. Yeah. So because two things on the cover are really interesting. Really a lightsaber on the cover. <laughs> Axel, a, yeah, Axel Greylark is on the cover do, wielding a, a lightsaber and a blaster, and you know what lightsaber he's yielding. Wow. He's yielding one of hers. Oh. So no, like just I love I love. It's purple, but it looks different from the art in the other one. Yeah, it's, it's hard to tell, but it's definitely that black. It's got it's it's very similar. Like it's it's got this it, one has chrome on it though. It's got like a chrome. Does it have thing. chrome? Okay, all right. Yeah. So it might. But be the wrong. rest is all black. Right. They might have just did a different design because it looks. Yeah, got like the black handle that looks similar. Yeah, it's yeah. very the the handles are very similar. Mm. But I love that little bit of storytelling of just like, just the so, cover. So spoiler alert, I guess. Uh, yeah. Greyjoy is going to make it to the next book. I, I mean, mean the, the la- like the yeah, and the last line of that book. Uh, of convergence pretty much sets up like finger tenting yeah i'll be back moment right maybe finger tenting maybe finger tenting i think there might be a redemption he's getting in like prison fights every day though because he's like i like the pain he's like yeah (laughs) it's like all right okay (laughs) yeah yeah spoiler alert he does end up in prison. he is kind of like he does a lot of ways he is yeah and star wars loves their redemption arcs though to let 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 us not forget yeah yeah um do we want to like broach that? I mean, obviously, so they they basically there's all this tumultuous chaos and deaths and sort of like the the war is is rising in tension. And then uh, this marriage pack is 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 introduced and it eventually happens. And Axel Greylark basically triggers these sort of like bounty hunters coming. But before all that happens, they are researching this toxin and this poison, basically, that yeah. right. That killed the assassin or or and uh that what do you guys think of that whole plot with the the toxin and the poison and the scorpions and all that sort of stuff and did that evoke anything or make you think of anything we've read elsewhere in the high republic like in terms of how we hear axel talk about the mother basically say that 
she wanted the toxin to be airborne and yeah. like how and then when mm-hmm. you think about the nile and the the neurotoxic yeah. the, the toxic yeah. gas that they wield yeah. i'm mean, like oh this is all basically origin for yeah. the toxic gas that they deploy in right. the nile yeah yeah, yeah we're, we're definitely seeing that right we, story yeah, yeah exactly we, we we're seeing the, the the story one of the story points is going to be the evolution of of this of the path of the open yeah. hand into the nile yes so that's never far from my mind even then like how yeah. like all the yeah, like so he's stuck, you know, at, at the yeah, Axel's stuck on a on a prison ship, but like full of people. And the way he can command crowds, especially of ne'er do wells, I feel like, you know, that could be sort of the basis of like the first cruise for the Nihil or the, you know, the strength of and, and like where they it get sounds like he sort of like rejects the path though. Like he he's kinda yeah. angry that he was so bought in for a time. Right. Well, we know sooner or later a row is going to take over. So maybe he's holding out hope for a coup or something. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. we do know their convergence is interesting because we do know it's interesting. That's the title of this book, given that we know after Path of Deceit that um, uh, what's her name? Um, Mama Roe is going to um, Jeddah. Um, They're going to do this pact on Jeddah. Like a lot of stuff is about to converge on Jeddah, basically. Yeah. I'm yep. excited to see what happens there because that seems to be like the yeah. next whole uh, I mean, uh, uh, series of books uh, is going to be talking about that. Speaking of looking ahead, I have the kind of publication calendar, right? So this is the last full book in wave one. Uh, wave two will start in April with uh, that Cataclysm book that I was referring to. But before then, we have a lot of other things coming out. We have... The rest of the kind of first story arc in the higher public in Marvel, we have the higher public adventures. We have that the 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 blade uh, miniseries um, and a couple other things. Yeah, exactly. Porter Angle. And I think a lot of those and we'll talk about the comics in a moment are about the the uh, convocation. Is that what it's called on Jedha? Right. Yeah. And so I, I think that's I think that's where we're moving. Right. I think that's kind of that this in between. It'll be interesting to see, like, we keep getting rumblings of this in the in the books. And I think and it was we'll talk about like this is where we're going right before we get to wave two. Yeah. And I think all the new characters that have been revealed thus far will get a lot more story right across. Yeah. Other yeah. books and even some of the masters like the Jedi masters were introduced yeah. to. I think I think Creighton they Sun. might cross over into other stories as well. So, um. Yeah, if it's anything like like I think Crichton's you know, son is one. in another book that's upcoming or something like. There's more Crichton's son. Yeah. Um, um, I love yeah. the Jedi in this book, by the way. I loved. Yeah, they're super fun. Ella, I thought she was awesome. Uh, Enya Keen, that Padawan was pretty cool. Yeah, they're pretty generic Jedi, which I like. I feel like everyone was a little yeah. too like typecast, not too typecast, but like very typecast in the first one. Like it's like. This yeah. one's a mechanic and this one does this thing. And this, you know, these are just like, you know, Jedi Knights trying to find their way in the galaxy. They still have their own quirks. Um, you could say that Gela's is curiosity. I think that's one word they keep coming back to her. Yeah. I kind of love the, I kind of love how humble and patient these Jedi were though. And yeah, well, they're, they're, you got these really like zealous sort of monarchies and religious nuts all around them. And like, they're like, uh, you know, they're, they're like a path. Uh, they're, they're thinking they have oh the old gods. They're talking about the old gods on Iram or yeah, I believe it's Iram or Irano. I mean it's mm-hmm. Irano. Um, and Gel is like, you know, I'm not in, in my mind. I but you know, who am I to tell them that the Force isn't you know doesn't embody any one person and, and the Force is all things. Like who am I to tell them no, it would never vest that sort of power in any one individual being or something like that. And I was like, that's so interesting that she's having these like religious. Yeah. kind of internal dialogue with herself and i was like that's that's pretty cool i thought that was fun for a jedi yeah, yeah. as, as yeah. we go down that path it, it's interesting because there's so many force users and there's some pushback against the jedi and i mean for me star wars is the jedi like that's that was always the thing that brought me in and their like re, their religion and their role well, I think and, the High Republic uh, does such a good job of exploring what the Jedi are in the convocation of the Force or what they mean to that, which is like they're the ones that wield a weapon like at all times. And it's a weapon of light. And this sort of like like uh, Olivia, I think, in the uh, convocation meeting, like uh, 
draws her saber in front of all the other religions. And I'm like, the Jedi are the religion that actually has a kind of weapon and then uh, mm-hmm. holds order with it. Which yeah, I'm like, right. that okay. is, to me, that's kind of, that's and the uses, Bushido sort of samurai yeah. aspect of it, like the justice and the peacekeeping. Like, it's, you can't even use peace. I don't think peacekeeping is like a good word, really, because in this book, when they're on the, when they're on Irino, like there's, I guess there's a one like a near human or humanoid in the background that's just like, you know, uh, uh, a fighting for peace is like going to the desert for rain or something like that. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Accusing, uh, you know, like accosting yeah. the Jedi. And I was like, whoa, that is like, that is a deep sentiment. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's yeah, the I mean, paradox that always hangs over the Jedi. But yeah, I, I that's like, what oh. I mean. It's like in relation to all these other religions, I'm looking forward to seeing how they differentiate the Jedi. I mean, the Jedi and, and, um, and set them apart. Because we don't know. They might not be the only ones with force weapons. They're well, like, yeah, the Mutaka or okay. in like right. the Philos, yeah. for for Nasi or whatever, like they like immediately whip out weapons as well. But it's like yeah. I don't know. There's it nothing was, cooler than a lightsaber. Yeah, lightsaber and like the <laughs> was for, the Jedi was the first to ignite it. I was like, okay, this is yeah. Like that's the thing. Like don't don't get me wrong. Like I'm not arguing against the Jedi, the the Jedi, but like I, I think it's fascinating, and we're gonna get more of this. I hope in Phase Two, as we were all talking about. But like their their nomenclature for advancement through like the different levels of Jedi, one of them is knight, right? Like a knight yeah. is a person who does yeah. battle with a sword, right? Yes. Like that's, that's like, it's fascinating. When you start does. thinking yeah, about yeah. it, right? Like, yeah. like it's not Jedi monk, yeah. right? Knight it's Jedi Aaron. knight. Yeah, yeah. 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 Right. Yeah, for sure. Like a Templaric sort of zealot. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Kind of yeah. A little bit. Um, yeah. It can be scary, but some Jedi are chill and that's, we like. Sure. Yeah, agreed. Um, so moving right along here, um, I wanted to talk. So th- they make this marriage pact, and they're like, th- they just make all these plans <laughs> immediately, and um, and it was, but it was very heartwarming. And then like immediately, they found a dead body in like the groom's bed. Bounty um, yep. battle wedding but, ceremony. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, <laughs> and they're right. leading up the wedding ceremony, but um, f- but first they decide they're going to go on this tour of Irano, like. But just four of them, like four kids in like a minivan uh, traveling yeah. around the harsh deserts of Ar- Arrakis. <laughs> of Arrakis. Arrakis. So, yeah. <laughs> and it was like, I'm like, wait, what? Like, I understand that they want to do like missions <laughs> or like, you know, some outreach. And, and this is part of it. It's weird. It's also another very Game of Thrones thing to like go on a pilgrimage. So, like the new kings yeah, go on a pilgrimage. Yeah. I love that. That's the thing. It's also a very real world. Like if, if you watch the show The Crown at all, like I think it's the first or yep. second season. Yeah. Queen Elizabeth like goes to Africa, right? And goes yeah. to some of their some of their uh, territories, uh, read Conquered Lands. Uh, yeah. and, and does that, like seeing how the individuals live and doing outreach and trying to do that. Right. Like, yeah. so it, but they it is, do it, it like the very next real. week and they do it yeah. like, all right, two chaperones, uh, the, the drunk, uh, chancellor's son who has no qualifications <laughs> whatsoever. Yeah. Let's put him on there. And then yeah. a It'll one be fine. Jedi night. Perfect. Let's go. There's yeah, guys, how about It'll Quinn be or how about QN the like drink oh, droid oh. that like oh, makes like, drinks all day? The like therapy droid? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, that's the thing. Like, how can you how can you how can you not think there's some redemptive redemptive qualities in Axel? Yeah. Axel, how is, much no, he loves he Quinn. Uses ben, his your favorite drug, ship was the droid. Eventide in the, like that was your oh, favorite yeah. ship in this book. No yeah. doubt. Yeah. I was like, oh, Ben's loving every yeah. time that ship. <laughs> Actually, I, I need to see if someone's drawn. Yeah, what is that ship? I need to. I remind it. It makes me think of um the 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 ship. What was it? The Mantis from um the. Jedi. Yeah, those scenes. Order. I think. I think that's, that's, that's oh, that's yeah, like yeah. It, thing, just like the, the describing those scenes, basically, like the detailing. Yeah. You know how he was flying through space and just how much swag was just dripping off his vehicle and like, yes, his it's like gold was... and chrome. <laughs> and yeah, like, I mean, yeah. I was uh, like, oh, this book is amazing. It's just pure like, sex. Axel's the best character <laughs> in this book because his I mean, his chapters are awesome. Or his his. Hey, it's I, it's my favorite part. And again, not to not to invoke uh, Star Wars Galaxies, the original, like not the not the mobile game, but the MMO game. Well, it's like what you play. would do if you were like if it was an open world I mean, Star Wars game, it, you it, would just live it, the Axel Greylark. I mean, it <laughs> is it is it. I mean, it is what I did. Like, but when yeah. they invented ships, I literally had a ship that was chromium. And yes. I literally just flew around in a museum with all my quests. Like, I just, the, the entire rooms 
I just wish I could get access to that. <laughs> like it had like Jedi masks and lightsabers yeah. and like and bounty gill and like ban- and like bantha heads everywhere. Like and I would just fly around and just like wait for people to attack me. And then I'd be like, oh, I guess I got to run to the cockpit. And I would just sit yeah. there and just like cruise around in my chromium. Like yeah. it was awesome. Yeah. I miss that life. were incredible. Uh, great. I should have been writing papers in grad school. I know that's the greatest <laughs> life. I want that open world Star Wars game where you uh, was so great. You can like their ships from here. The Paxion. That thing was pretty rad. Um, oh, yeah, because that's that's one of the long beams. I like those designs. Those are pretty cool. Um. And uh, yeah, they didn't have a ton of ships here, but definitely the standout was uh, the uh, Eventide. What did you get? Who? Do, what did you guys think of the dueling chancellors? The uh, the two chancellors we have. Oh, that wasn't. They haven't. They really just glazed. Yeah, up. all right. So the yeah. two chancellors yeah. are Malo, who's a Quarren from uh, Moncala, the planet Moncala, right? And then Malo seems very invested in like trade and the economy. He's just well, like. We they, need to clear this hyperlane. I don't care how, because yeah. pirates are like, you know. Yeah. Uh, so they, they said they there is a division of labor there. Like, so then there's Chancellor Greylark, and she so she does like she runs the show from the core and like keeps she's the uh <laughs> uh exploit your own resources. Like she she monitors a ship and then Malo is like governing the expansion, I think. And he's like he's doing all the outreach um to bring in outer rim worlds is the way i understand yeah Yeah, it's cool when he talks about like remapping hyper lanes and like yeah that was cool i was like this is so awesome yeah explore and exploit um another that's for for jason and for (laughs) (laughs) Too good. way too good um yeah i i like both chancellors i thought they were cool uh i do feel i do i'm suspicious of axel's mom because yeah, I don't know. I just there's something shady going on. Yep. Yeah, she's an interesting cat too. We don't really get a lot from her. Keong Greylark, uh, yeah, yeah. Greylark. Um, yeah, she's wild. Um, I, I hope we see more of them. I am, but I'm more interested in that. That pilgrimage was nuts. Like a lot of cool things happened. It was just they just yeah. went station to station and like That's new so like. Good crises happened it was just a really fun run in the middle of like the you know late second act yeah yeah um the book was just filled with adventurous beats throughout the book which i thought was super powerful yeah and you can see how it like their you know conflicts bring the all the characters together they're really a a fun foursome um yeah and it was wild they're all really likable characters and um and really fun to to read about yeah, and like scorpions like jumping at you. Like if this oh, book yeah. was <laughs> this book oh, right. great. I forgot about the, the scorpions. knife fight, the bane blade yeah. fight, uh with Ziri. Yeah. And, like that was amazing. Um oh my like ah, this whole book, the again the battle arena with um Gela, like that that whole thing. Yeah. Yeah, just yeah, constant like, action. It was the like, I don't know if we've had this much action in a High Republic book in a little bit. I guess like the big fallen stars and the you know, the light of the Jedi and those, those, those books are pretty action packed, but this was, this was nonstop. It was a ride. No. Yeah. So really action like, adventure. It's not like an action adventure more than like the, the questing Jedis in some ways. Yeah. But it was really fun. I really like, they took half the book to sort of set it up. And then I, but I really did care about the characters by the time they were going through these. It's, you know, sometimes when it's just like action, beat, action, beat, action, beat, I can kind of get lost in it, but there's a lot of motion in here too. They all care about each other. Yeah. and have uh interesting things so yes um nice anything else about so we, then we get to the wedding the wedding finally the wedding happens on iram um and that was interesting i mean there's all these also like people are just constantly getting murdered we should probably talk about that yeah there's like <laughs> yeah it's a lot of death yeah yeah um yeah, so the mother is Wait, pulling strings. So that scene was crazy. Yeah, yeah. so the mother. Let's we got to get there's to the two, mother. I guess. There's two antagonists, right? The mother's one of them. Yeah, and the other one is is also the the lieutenant of Irano, who's also trying to destabilize. He's just like two war monks. Oh, Rev Jones. Rev Farrell. Rev uh, and his dad, Jazz. Viceroy Farrell. Yeah. Viceroy Farrell. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah, so there's two, but like, the, I'm, I don't know, there's like these two insipid things going on and, but like all of the, 
all of the antagonists keep failing. They just keep tripping over themselves and messing yep. up, but people get murdered. And uh, um, it's really added a lot of tension because I, I didn't really know who was who. I was like, well, there are a couple options here of who would be motivated to destabilize this relationship. I still don't really even know what stake the mother had in this this marriage. No. Oh, she wanted I, the uh, weapon that the queen Ari- Ariadne Oh, she was like that. Was all about she just wanted the, was the drug, huh? Still the, the, making, the yeah. Because Fentu, Fentu Zen at the end is just like what? Like you're yeah, still yeah. developing this poison, right? Right. It's right. And then you you learn that there was a bargain made with the mother, yeah, yeah with the, the queen Amarilla, right? Adriala, Adriala, Adriala. Thank you. Um, and the mother, right? And then, right. well, yeah. Axel also was in communication with the mother and we find out axel actually in his darkest moments i guess after losing it all in the gambling in the casinos like would just go to the path of the open hand on delna i guess yeah like worship the mother i don't know um yeah so the mother's in the background she's kind of like the palpatine of these books um she's kind of controlling she totally everything. yep yeah uh so that's that's happening. Um, yeah. And then the bounty hunters crash the wedding, which is so cool. Right. I just imagine like Trandoshans with like bandoliers and like giant blasters just like <laughs> unloading. And yeah. and then I think I think Ziri like pulls a pistol and like shoots at someone as they kiss at the end. Yeah. Of, I just saw like slow <laughs> yeah. motion, like yep. 3000 yeah. frames per second. Oh. Just. Yes. Yeah. In yeah. She hunting. had it like in her garter. I, it was I, like a I custom love the, like, blaster. Yeah. She's like, I just know I'm going to need this at some point. Yeah. I mean, it was so, I mean, it was wild. It was just like, there's getting like, people are trying to fight their way in and like shots are being fired. And Ziri is, uh, the, the bride to be was like, just do this stupid like ceremony. We just need to get through this. Cause like we've been fighting for peace for five years. Like this is going to happen. We're going to make this work. Um, and, uh, yeah, I think the officiant was uh, chancellor Malo. And as soon as it's done, he like drops behind cover, puts up a blaster, yep. and shooting people. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is like a great line of like, yeah, let's just yeah. do the short version of this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they do yeah. it the Urami or like I don't even think they do it. They do like Malo's like uh, rights or whatever marriage rights. It's amazing. Yeah. Um, so good. That scene is amazing. I just love this book. I think this book has super high highs, and you, it's a great I, read. It goes by. It quick. was such a great so read. It goes by so fast, but I was just like, I, I will be up front. Like the first quarter, I'm kind of like, all right. Like I wasn't disliking it, but I, I, it didn't hook me. And then like something happened, and I, and I can't even put my finger on it. But suddenly, I'm like, like actively looking forward. Like usually, when I read these books, I read them over a week. I have like my, I have to read thirteen percent every night <laughs> in order night. to get through. Like it's my, it's my like homework every night, and like not in a bad way, but it's like my checklist yeah. of things. And usually if it's like, if it's a book I'm not enjoying, I get to that 13% and I'm like, and done, put it away, read some comics. Right. And like, I think I got through this book in like four sittings because, well, like, it, like the first night I read 13%, yeah. I was like, all right, fine. Second night, 30%, all right, fine. And I think the third night I read like 20, like another quarter of the book in one sitting where I'm just like, yeah. something just hooked me. Like, it's just such great writing and the characters. I mean, I, I, I guess like part of it is like the plot's pretty linear and somewhat straightforward, though there is like, but like the characters are really well developed the the um the intrigue is really great like the re- i really appreciated the reveal of axel in the book yeah. where like i could see it coming about like a paragraph before it happened and i was like no 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 yeah. no yeah. When it, like when, yeah yeah also so binot ulu that guy who just like is always in the shadows just doing yeah. aster puff and just <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. Right. tweaking puff. yeah yeah just tweaking yeah, and like Barking commands. I know. I want to see him <laughs> in a day of life for that guy. <laughs> Binot Ulu. Is that, oh man, yeah. he's great. But like Binot will come for me. He's just <laughs> drinking um, Ayazakal liquor, which I'm pretty sure is mezcal. Yeah. <laughs> oh, totally. Yeah. Every scene, he was just like, <laughs> every scene, he put that scene. together, going yeah. in. Yeah. Yeah. Um, rad. All right. So yeah, this is fascinating. Um, we also read um Quest for the Hidden City. Unless there's any other final notes you want to say about this book, I feel like 
If you haven't read it, yeah. you should read it. Yeah, I don't want to go blow by blow through it. I think we've covered Convergence, Zoraida Cordova, Cordova yeah. incredible let me, book. Actually, let me see if I have any other um, things that I wanted to say. Not I really. Said most of the quotes that I already um no. I don't know. There was a lot of great. There's stuff. one oh, really. Yeah. Look at like granular. There's one thing I highlighted where it's really interesting where they mentioned like they had encountered some kids who had force abilities but were too old to be trained by Jedi. Yeah. Which is such so an interesting thing. Like, what do they do? They send them to Jedi to be trained to be adopted by other orders. And I think it's fascinating yeah. is the Jedi will don't just like leave them there. Like they point them in the direction of other force yeah. users, basically. That's a great option because then the kids can sort of like meander around, be like, that doesn't sound like me, that doesn't sound like me, that doesn't sound like me. Oh, this sounds kind of yeah. cool. You know? Yeah, yeah. I did like the whole Greylark bit where, like, when they talk about death, and he's like, "I want to burn quickly in a blaze of glory." A super, mm-hmm. like that stuff was awesome, and how like yeah. there's a nice loop back to that. Like they comment on that line later in the book, right? But it doesn't right. like he doesn't literally burn up in a blaze of glory. It's just like this motivating factor. He's like this character that you like you want you want to like, but they won't let you. They like sort yeah, of keep exactly. pulling you back and being like, he's not really a virtuous character, but it's there, but he's not. It's it's really common. But there's little hints of like little things. Like he starts to question the mother. Like he has these other little things going on. Like, like well, it's like I, Fentu Zen and him are kind of like homies. Like they're friends. Yeah. 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 I mean, and they're really peers in a lot of ways. Yeah. Peers. You know, it's like I, I'm sure Axel Gerlach doesn't run into a lot of peers. How do you who do you commiserate with when you're the son of the chancellor? You know? Right. Yeah. Um, they I, they do a good job of making you story. feel for a, per, a person of great great privilege, right? <laughs> yeah. Like 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 where you actually like usually I'm the first person to be like ah whatever I'm not I have no sympathy for this person and in this book I they are I sympathize a little bit at times with this character. Yeah, um, Rad, why don't we talk about quest for the hidden city then? Let's uh, do it. So this is, yeah, Young Reader book. Um, I don't have a handy uh, summary, but I could grab one quickly if you guys tap dance for a while. Sure. Uh, um, I mean, I don't have a summary either. I mean, but, really, uh, it's, it's, to me, this is, uh, I guess, Jedi go uh, uh, to answer a distress call on a yeah, uh, and the planet yeah, Abadas. And fight, and, sure, uh, and fight zombie the, bat people. Yeah, and the, and the bat people of Abadas, the Catacoot, uh, I guess turn them in the uh, towards the 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 planet they had they had once inhabited inhabited and left uh, called Gloam and when they go to Gloam there are monsters there's the Jedi who were originally posted the distress beacon actually who you find out other people had dispo- uh, also posted distress beacons but like local low like short range distress be- distress beacons and then we meet new characters and. Lots of lots of uh, hijinks ensues on Gloam, and then yep, it's Werewolf at Night. It's uh, kind of yeah, monster exactly. movie at yeah. the end. Of all of this, uh, it's yeah, uh, with the with the bat people basically. Like the people are described as bat like throughout the yeah. book, which I'm like, can you do that? Can't you just? I think you just describe it, and you can't use the word bat. But then I was like, right. we're just gonna use the we're gonna use the word bat a lot. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Yep. I was, I mean, again, and then like give you an illustration. Readers, so they want to give you something to anchor the you know the visuals on. Uh, yeah, you know, it's yeah, but it's um, yeah, it's interesting. It's about it's a valuable book. It's, it's not like a Tuka cat's like nose or whatever with like long ears. It's like the yeah. bat looking face. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, oh, OK, yep. all right. <laughs> we're, there, just, we're just going there was there. an illustration in my Kindle of one. Like, Same. OK, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's really kind of funny looking. Um, yeah, but it's like because they're like flightless man bats. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, so. Queens. Yeah, so we have a protagonist um, in this situation. Rupert. Yeah, Rupert. A, a Rupert Natani. Yeah, it's the pat. The, yeah, Padalon's Rupert. Yeah, I would argue yeah, the she's like Rupert. the main yep. character. Of, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like again, with with the with yeah, the young Rupert readers, you, you, yeah. yep. Your protagonists are always the kids, right? Which makes sense because that's who your audience is. So you got Rupert as the as the Jedi Padawan, right? And it's um. Is it Das? Uh, Salandro Show, her master? Das. Yeah, oh. Das left front. <laughs> I immediately thought of Ben. I was like, oh, yeah, this is. And we need the Black Series immediately. We need the higher public, like, action figure line. Like, oh, we, yeah. we, we needed it yesterday. actually <laughs> need that, Grant. That's a great. Now I'm angry that that's not a thing. like, she has we a really shield, do. and like, we, there's, yeah, now there's a reason. The shield. Yeah, yeah I, I forgot about that. Shalandra Rowe? Yeah. Is that, no, wait, what was uh, her name? Show, I think. Show, yes. Yeah. 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 What a cool character. 
holy smokes. I was like, this is, I think this is my favorite character of the book. Yeah. It's um, funny. They kind of Charles Schultz, the adults a little bit in these younger yep, reader ones. They they're like, they're pretty, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wah, wah, they're like, wah, yes, wah. Yeah. yeah, right. They just like, Oh, and they gave me a stern, stern look and I don't really know what to make about that, you know, which is like, really yeah. Like, um, yeah, they're kind of great. But it's how did you guys like like the Pathfinder team? Like and, and like you see all the components of a Pathfinder team on yeah. the yeah, was yeah. that cool to you guys? Because I was like, this is so much fun. This yeah. is I already love the whole setup for this book. Like going to yeah. answer this distress call. They're this Pathfinder team. You have the engineer, yeah. you have the pilot, you have the droid, you have the Jedi. Um, and they're all like sort of like outfitted for this sort of like uh, yeah. I guess. Yeah, uh, interstellar I, travel. This, this they're pioneers. Long distance sort of frontier. It's, exploration. Yeah, it's it's super funny. I always go into these. They're called middle grade novels. They're written for like seventh and eighth graders. I always go into them going like the completest brain of me going like, OK, I have to read everything. Yeah, and I started so and, then, and then halfway through, I'm always like, I'm really enjoying this. This yeah. is lots of fun. Like, like you know, like, not yeah. like it's going to be in depth, yeah. but like it's just a great beach read. Like it just goes through. But like. The characters are super interesting. There's still depth to them. Their motivations are interesting. And especially with the way these they're unrolling the High Republic, you know you're gonna see these characters pop up in other books, including probably yes. in one of the one of the main runs, like novels. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to see that. And the Pathfinders are such like they're like the hallmark of this time period. It's like there's yeah. an expansion and these these are the main tools of the Jedi. And um, but this is the book out of all these books in the first wave here like that covers the Pathfinder teams most in depth, <laughs> you know, where it really breaks down the roles and the people and what it's like and who the other, you know, some of the main players are out there on these Pathfinder teams. Um, and uh, yeah, that's, I think it's, it's fun. It's like a, a fun new flavor of star Wars. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, Pathfinder team was great. We have the other, the team they're trying to save, which is like Rook Baran that jedi yeah. master yeah um he sounded cool the only one left oh, right yeah yeah because the whole team died or i think yeah he said. yeah i pronounced his name rock but that's okay a oh, rock is it rock, rock? yeah Dar i guess okay. it would be R O K. yeah Dar okay that would be oh, rock. rock but i, right. I also right. it's really it's weird grant because i also read it rook but you're right it would be rock yeah weird yeah okay yeah, and then we have a couple of pioneers too. So this is another flavor of people that are. Existing. It was like another Pathfinder unit, right? And so, like, yeah, right. Well, Wasn't it also an exploratory kind of group? They were there to check out that lost Pathfinder unit, but there was also those two people. Remember Das Lefbrock and his dad? Yes, Das yeah. and Spencer. Das, or something? Yeah, yeah. Trapped <laughs> on the shadow planet. Um, yeah, yeah. Gloam, Gloam, Gloam. I mean, it's Gloam. Yeah. Gloam is how I pronounce it, like the Gloam. gloam? I just yeah, said yeah. Gloam. Yeah. All right. Gloam All right. it is. Let's go. Okay. Yeah. Right. Gloam, gloam is great, yeah. too. Yeah, because like the Gloaming, you ever listen to that Radio Hood song? <laughs> so it sounds like Gloaming. Okay. Oh, <laughs> oh, now I need to listen to that song. <laughs> go for it. I will, yeah, I will go do that. You can listen to what Gloam means. Um, I love it. Um, <laughs> yeah. That planet was super cool. Yeah, it was terrifying. It was, it was just so like, scary. Yeah. It was like vestiges of life that were left on it after been like mined within a brink of its like yeah. uh, existence, and now it's yeah. like a shadow world, like you said. Yeah, yeah. covered with zombie vampires. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> just Bad zombie people vampires. that are like mineral yeah. diseased. Yeah. Oh, that was beautiful the way it was described, though. I know. I love that part of the book, honestly. The whole mineral disease and yeah, they like so you know. Spoiler alert: they like catch, they, they catch a disease from mining, like something in the mineral actually yeah. it was like an organic, and the mineral started taking over your body, which is terrifying. A little body, like, it's yep. like mithril, but kids. like if it, it like it met the right. you know symbiote from venom and like uh, attached onto your body yeah. and sort of like it turned you into like a crystal zombie yeah but like fun sci-fi that's great it's so I cool. love it is super fi sci-fi and and i love that you who is it is it minic is the one is is minic Minic, the... Min, minic is the the one that's not infected and then relic is the one who's like relic infected. oh really yes yeah, so yeah. relic is kind of we learn is kind of the bad guy of the whole thing yeah. um but like i i love the fact that at the very end like so he's infected 
and his whole goal is basically just like, I know I'm going to die, but I'm going to just do this thing that I was going to do. And yet, like, I just there's such a great Jedi moment where where, you know, at the end of the day, still going to try to save him. Right. Like, like right. that's what the yeah, Jedi it, was, does. it was such and a it, heroic ending in this book where it was like, yeah, well, guess what? We're going to we're going to find a cure and we're going to save him, even though with yeah. his, you know, it, dying <laughs> moments he tried to kill us, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And they don't <laughs> spoiler alert, but <laughs> yeah, like yeah, yeah. they try and that's what matters. Like, I, oh, yeah, they just like, a great little moment. No, but, yeah. Yeah, they don't. They like there's no real. They don't. But they, but they did, were able to use what was happening to him to cure the others, right? Which yeah. I think was a nice little moment as well. Like it's just a nice little tidy bow at the top of that at the end yeah. of that little. Yeah. And the whole thing was sort of a comment on capitalism and the dangers mm-hmm. of capitalism, which I thought was yep. nice. <laughs> yeah, right. And uh, fracking versus drilling yeah. and mm-hmm. any other way to exploit, you know, Nature. our natural resources. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Exactly. Um, all hot bus and button issues that the parents will appreciate, I think. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure no one will be yelling at this while listening to it with their kids in the car. Yeah. I'm sure it's fine. Yeah. And uh, like Deatrix and Obek were standout characters. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was cool to see them confront some of the dangers before the Jedi and sort of like, uh, and just have all those action beats with them, like in sharing it. It wasn't just Jedi heavy action. It was like the whole team got involved. I thought that was so much fun. Yeah. Oh, the catacoot. That's the name of the, the people, right? The co- yeah, the catacoot. Yeah. Yeah, catacoot. Good name. There was a catacoot Jedi on like one of the wall panels and the temple. That's right. I was like, wow. I, yeah. 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 <laughs> I, I had some of that highlighted. Like, I love the wall. I love the description of the wall paintings of just like ancient Jedi there. Like, yeah. Um, yeah, t- there, we get some, you know, the four shield you mentioned, um, oh, there, there was like a scene at one point, uh, she's, yeah, like... she's <laughs> surrounded by these creatures and like, and she had, and, and what she decides to do is just take the shield and just boop them all on the snoots. And she's just like, yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Boop, like, and just like boops them all. And they're like, I mean, really hard and it knocks them back wow, and all that. Cool. But like, <laughs> and then she like yeah. uses it to levitate on it, then stand on it so she can kind of fly or like support other people. Yeah. Really the shield. I did like that line she always said where she's like, I'm the sword, I'm the shield, not the sword or something like that. I was like, yeah, that yeah. Is so cool. Yeah. Um, good times. Um, yeah, we, yeah, we are the shield. I get it now. It's our job to protect those who can't protect themselves. Mm-hmm. So we do get a lot of like uh, so Jedi ideology in here, too, which I appreciate. I like that it's not defining. It's sort of like. Adding more context to what the Jedi yeah. are. Yeah you know, reinforcing the, the role. And um, it's just kind of cool. I like when they do stuff like that, because I, like I said, they're going to have to differentiate. Why are the Jedi the ones running shop now and not another like race right. called like are yeah. they tyrants? Are they like holding the other cults down or are they like, so, you know, I mean, I think the Jedi are the protagonists in the situation. So, um, I, you know, we're from agree, the, but we're following their point of view, but um, it'll be, it's going to be interesting because it's going to be kind of, they're going to have to totally. questions. But they have to, as you know, they have to justify it more now, right? Because as I mentioned yeah. before, they're bringing in all these other force using groups. So they have to justify why the Jedi are the the ones who are right, which I think you have to, right? I mean, we can argue about it, but like, it's hard to, it's hard to, it's hard to follow Star Wars. And then suddenly the lesson we learned 40 years later is that the Jedi were wrong, <laughs> right? Yeah. Like that'd, right. Be, that'd be a bummer. Right. I know. I know, but the thing—that's the thing. I have—I have as much faith in this show as I do Game of Thrones. I'm just like, who knows? The way that Phase yeah. Two ended, I'm like still a little like scarred from, and maybe it's PTSD reading Phase One now because I'm like, don't get attached to anybody. Don't get attached. Oh no, don't get attached. Well, to is anybody. it in this that's book? Is it in this book or in Convergence where one of the Jedi is like to be a peacekeeper and guardian of justice uh you have to first like learn about all living creatures in the galaxy and their connection to the force or something like that and like and like you know live life have life experience you know yeah. explore the galaxy meet people like have yeah, a be in the world intergalactic viewpoint yeah, uh, yeah. for you can act on those sort of issues and things like that and i was like that's yeah. great ideology if that's what it is but i think a lot of people just live in core oh, imagine the jedi that just come through coruscant do a couple you know field work missions and then you know and it just they kind of don't and have that experience there. yeah 
Really. Yeah, like Jocasta knew. I mean, I don't know how long she was in the field, but she spent a lot of time in those stacks, you know. Right. Reith Silas was headed. He's for a high republic guy. He that's all he wanted to do was just sit at home and in the in and read and do research. Yeah. And it's just like, but you know, but he knew what to do when he was out there. They're they're all trained the same way. But um, yeah, you're right. But, uh, that, but I love uh, that we cultural. also at the end of this book for sure. I know that Salandra Show is going on a pilgrimage to Jeddah at the end of this book. Yes. And, uh, yeah, and then you know her Padawan, um, Ruper is like. It's like it kind of like imagines what that would be like or whatever. And that's, that's, that's a great part of the book too. I thought that was so yeah. cool. And it yeah, kind I mean, of ties into the comics. Beautiful. I was going to say, is that, is that there's this perfect transition. Should we stop imagining and start discussing? Yeah. 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 Not to yeah. rush us along. I mean, we, is anyone else have anything about quest for the no, city? I just feel like we, no, that's yeah. great. Um, yeah. So we're on to the high Republic one and two. Uh, this is uh, Kevin Scott. No, this is the Charles Sewell run, right? Nope, Scott. No, this is Kevin Scott. Scott. Okay. This is Kevin Scott. Yeah. Cool. Um, Ario Anadino is the artist. Mark Morales, inker. Frank William, colorist. Uh, Andrea Picardo is the backup story artist. VCs Ariana Mayer is the letter, and uh, Anadito did. Uh, and in Dito did the cover uh, for my issue here, which I think is the just the main yeah, one. Yeah, I think it's the main one. Um, yeah. Balance of the Force, Chapter One, The Pilgrim Moon. Uh, Vilder Mack, a Jedi Knight, traumatized by an encounter with the dark side in his youth and gifted with advanced precognitive abilities, arrives on Jeddah to serve a new post in the Holy City. Upon landing in Jeddah, uh, Vilder meets Padawan Matea Kati, whom he assists with investigating or Maddie, who he assists with an investigation of a missing relic from the Shrine of Sharav. After a few chaotic moments in the streets of Jeddah, Vilder and Maddie find Sister Vakara, whom reported the stolen relic dead, and a thief they encountered earlier in a crowded marketplace kneeling over her lifeless body. Vilder draws his saber on the suspect, but is quickly bested when the suspect uses an ancient force technique to stop his heart and render him petrified. Elsewhere on Jeddah, Padawan Olivia is tasked to represent the Jeddah, Jedi at a meeting at, of the Convocation of the Force, once at the second spire, Olivia quells a debate over the nature of the Yakumbi uh, applicants, whom, after the heated exchange, decide to relinquish their petition to join the divided convocation. Upon leaving the chaotic meeting, Olivia meets a familiar face, Radagaz Dobbs, or Sunshine, follower of the path of the open hand and peddler of rare trinkets and artifacts. That is uh, issue one. Yeah. Um, so poor Vildar Max. He's, you know, there he is. Mm -hmm on the planet and it's just i mean he just has a really terrible day um, yeah. yeah 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 couldn't help yeah. but feel bad he's just guy. he basically gets five finger heart exploding technique at the end of this <laughs> issue it's, it's rough yeah and then like along the way he's just like sullen it's just like everything's annoying to him um i forget what where is he coming from didn't he like didn't like everyone kill on his get killed on his pathfinder team or I forget his origin. He's just landing and having these dark visions of his youth and then like landing. Uh, I thought that was so well done. I thought Kevin Scott just crushed it with just sort of exploring the life of a sort of seasoned or experienced Jedi Knight. Just someone who's maybe basically had sort of traumatic things happen. And is, yeah. Is, you know, yeah. gripping with that but, still. And yeah. but, but you don't read him when you first see him as like like the lead head Jedi Knight. Like if you think about phase one, we're introduced to our three main characters, right? Those three right. points. Mm -hmm. They they are sold to us as like the best of the best, right? Right. And this is a this is a guy who does his job. Right. He's like he's working just, class. Like, he's a working class Jedi. He's a working class Jedi. Yeah. Yeah. He um, does seem to be like an investigator detective Jedi and he does yeah. have like the the sort of force visions. He can he has the precognition. Right. Uh, he's developed that he's very good at using uh or i guess i don't know how much control he has over it but it seems yeah. like he can call it call upon it and just sort of like see the future when he needs to which is handy yeah which is mm -hmm. pretty useful um i loved this issue i thought it was so good i thought um i thought it was so much fun to finally just explore Jeddah and like walk around the streets again and yeah see all yeah. that stuff and then you see like all the different there's already like you're immediately getting introduced to new sort of like uh force cults and practitioners and stuff like that like 
the first uh, Bapashi mystics that are just like performing in the streets. Like it felt like flea bottom, like in game of Thrones, it just felt like performance <laughs> yeah. artists in the street and felt alive in a fun way. And it's like Jenna during peacetime, the Holy city during peacetime is super interesting to me, given that rogue one, it was kind of tumultuous and it was during an event. Yeah. Yeah. After it's been sacked basically. Yeah. Cult of the so Central cool. Isopter showed up, and that's when you know the party's really going to go bad. <laughs> yeah, they showed yeah. up, and it just felt kind of That's ominous. right. Like, the vibes were never the same. It was like, oh, <laughs> yeah. They're only there for one reason. They, they only go to one type of party. <laughs> They're like Yakambi. They swim in the dark waters, you know? Like, not yeah. to be trusted. <laughs> <laughs> How did you guys feel? That was a crazy part of this book. We'll get there. But um, uh, that was wild to see... Uh, like the sorcerers of Tund, I feel like that's a legends thing. Like that's old, right, Adam? It's, I think so. Like I, I read it. I'm like, that's. I remember <laughs> that. I don't remember where. I remember Star that, Wars but stuff, I feel like. yeah, it like no, definitely nice. popped out to me when I heard that. Yeah. I'm like, huh? Yeah. There's a lot of room to rope yeah. in some, you know, some deep cuts and canonize some deep cuts here. Do you uh, know what this comes from, Ben? No. Oh wow! Because yeah, I feel like I'm failing our audience right now because I just no, but it sounded familiar to me too. But I of course did I research it? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't do any research, yeah. but nonetheless, it does sound super familiar, and it very well could be a sort of ancient force cult yeah. type thing. Um, yeah, it sounded super familiar to me, and uh, yeah, I didn't know if that was the dark sorcerer who was like. I don't know, attacking him in his nightmare. But uh, it, it, was he a sorcerer of Tund or was it like he just mistakes? And that's also a crazy commentary to me. Is like, what if you were persecuted by some sort of dark side believer of yeah. some cult? Yeah. And then like now you see other sort of like cult like people and people who belong in sort of okay. a, you know, certain cult like organizations. You see them as sort of like a threat like that character like that is. Yeah, that's fundamentally interesting commentary. Okay, yeah. so yeah, this is very old school oh, wow. Star Wars. So this is why I remember it sounded familiar, but I couldn't remember what it was because remember I am slowly working my way chronologically through all the Star Wars old EU. The Sorcerers of Tuned were mentioned in a lot of things, but their main yeah. run were it was in the Lando Calrissian books, which yes, were like that's written right. in the eighties, like oh, the yes. mind sh- the mind harp of Sharu yes, and the yes, yes. flame wood of Orson and the star cave of yeah. it, Thone Boca. It must be in the Marvel yeah. comics too, then, because I feel like that they share some of the same. References. Yeah, they definitely. I think they definitely share some of that stuff, and and mentioned in Darth Plagueis, mentioned in the book Darth Plagueis, mentioned in the Old Republic. Yeah, yeah like yeah. Everywhere. Okay. Yeah, yeah, but like they were the main baddies. Now that I'm remembering, in the Lando books, that was wild. That was wild. Yeah. That moment in the street when Vildar is like confronts that a delegate or whatever of sorcerers of two. Yeah, uh, that was. I mean, that's 1983. That was written. Like yeah. that is like that's Ooh. old. That's like that's like original <laughs> oh, gee, EU. That was like that's, that's like the fortieth year anniversary next next year. Those are the ones that they they had trouble trying to canonize in the old canon. If that makes sense, where yeah. they're like, oh man, are we gonna actually like do these count <laughs> in the nineties when they started writing more canon stuff? Yeah, yeah. And anyway, so after they confront that thief and Vildar gets you know knocked out. uh, well, we go to the convocation of the force. Like we see that meeting, which I do want to shout out Master Lieben right away because that is a tiger Jedi. And I would just like to say, like, that is the coolest Jedi I've ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> they are, just, yeah. What awesome. if a Jedi was a tiger at the same time? I was like, that's an option. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's an option. All right. Yeah. I'm, yeah, sign me up. Uh, that was too cool. Um, but yeah, so. Is, was her name Olivia? Basically, just space spelling. Uh, that uh, Jedi. The story. Yeah. Afterwards. Yeah, I'm trying to think if that's how I read it. I think it is. So I don't think we're back with her in the second issue. So yeah, it's been an issue since I've we've read her story. Yeah, no, I, same. It's been a while, but that was like just pops up. Uh, I'm not tracking Olivia, not Mathea, right? Mathea. Kathleen, you're talking about like the female lead in this? Or yeah. Olivia, Olivia Zeveron. Yeah, Olivia. Yeah, Olivia yeah. Zeveron. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's yeah. exactly Olivia. how it is. Olivia. Yeah. It's a it's a lot of there's a lot of extra there's a lot of extra letters in there. But that's yeah. definitely yeah. Olivia. 
yeah, then she has very, to go to the meeting. That's a very Star Wars spell ever. But yeah. can we talk about the convocation of the Force? Are we there? Are you guys ready for this? Like all let's, the members here? I have a list yeah. of the. I have a list of all the groups oh, here. Good. Oh, yes. well done. Um, bring it on. Okay, Sorcerers of Tund, we already covered. Um, the the Falanasi are the first ones that I think uh, appear. All right. Uh, you know, everyone's, I guess, uh, uh, shouting down the, the combi and sort of like maligning them. Uh, uh, then we have the combi, which are obviously those little like green fairy creatures. Um, yep, 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 yep. That was, that was new. I think, uh, the Lanto, which I guess are the plant, like the, I guess the, 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 the manipulating plant. the plant life. Yeah. Gardeners. Gardeners. Yeah. Uh, the Mutakai, the Mutukai, which is the Mutukai, Keldor yeah. guy with the like axe, basically, who's like, oh, yeah, for the light and all this kind of stuff. Um, nice to see another Keldor, that's good times. Yeah, the Guardians of the Wills, the Guardians of the Wills are represented as well. Yeah, uh, the yeah. Wills are huge in this. Like, I can't wait. To, issue two is like, I can't wait to talk about the Wills because. Issue three, I think, is going to deal directly with the Guardians of the Wills and where yeah. what they're like at this point in the timeline, which is so cool. It's um, kind of super cool. Of their power, probably. And the Church of the Force is also in the convocation of the Force. I yeah. Think. It's also a body. Um, yeah, I think that's that's everyone. Um, obviously, the path of the open hand is like outside in the streets, like, yeah. <laughs> like shouting on street corners or whatever. Uh, there's so many Did different... You mention... Yeah, who else? Were they part of the convocation? Was it the Truthsayers of Bafash? What was the name of the? Oh yeah, the Bafash. Group? I don't think they were. I didn't Bafashi? see them at the convocation meeting. Yeah, they're I, around, but I think you're right. They're around. They're, they're the in the streets too. Yeah, Bafash. Yeah, yeah right. so. that wasn't the actual convocation, was it? Or was it? Wasn't it just like a trial or something? Or was that just like a meeting? Or no, was that, that was the beginning. That was the second spire, and it's a a whole new location, I guess, where the convocation meets. Okay. I believe that's what that meeting was. Okay. Because it seems like there's meetings every day, and it's okay, all okay. Yeah, I thought it was like one event, but no, it's like it's they're ongoing. Well, it's for the I, the 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 Yukambi were the applicant; they were applying to join the convocation, and then yeah. at the end of the heated exchange, they sort of like relinquish their um, petition. right. They're like, "No, we're out. You guys are lame." <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're like, our yeah. search continues. <laughs> it was kind yeah. of sad. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I kind of read the convocation as kind of like a, a, you know, League of Nations or a UN type thing, right? Where, yeah, they weren't very civil. It wasn't no. a very civil meeting. They fight a lot. I'm pretty sure weapons were pulled out several times. Doesn't really strike me as your Oops. average I mean, religious meeting, but maybe, I don't no. know, maybe that's what would go down. Definitely a little different than the UN, but the UN, you do get some some infighting right. and yelling. But these are all for sure. these are religious zealots, though. This is like yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. Pope meeting, you know, whoever. I don't know. Whatever. Another. Give me another religious uh, figure. Anyways. Issue two, Vildar Mac awakens to continue his pursuit of the dark side or thief and suspected murder. Calling on the force, Vildar gets a vision of a red door and strange faces to which Padawan Maddie says could resemble the doors of enlightenment, a bar owned by Creighton Minst. Maddie leads Vildar to the aforementioned cantina and Vildar quickly identifies and engages the suspect once again. Vildar accuses the suspect of being a dark sider allowed, to which provokes the suspect to clear his name, which we learn is Tay Sarek. He says he's a Cephi and that he knocked Vildar out with a pheromone ability unique to his species. Vildar and Maddie let him go after he professes his innocence, but, but later track him to a back alley deal. Uh, a back alley uh, relic deal. Vilder and Maddie crash the deal, and upon questioning Tay, learn that one of the stolen relics he glimpsed came from the Temple of the Kyber. The two Jedi and Tay head to the Temple of the Wills to continue their investigation. That's uh, that's. Do we see Sunshine issue. Dobbs in this series once? Or oh no? yeah, he's in the first. He's in the first issue at the end. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. We just see and you see him. You see it's a nice. It's nice art of Sunshine. Yeah. yeah. That was cool. Read about him in Path of Deceit. But uh, yeah, at the end, I guess we should mention that at the end of the first issue, um, uh, what's her name? Olivia walks out of the, the meeting with the convocation and it runs into Sunshine Dobbs, uh, Radagast right. Dobbs, uh, Sunshine from Path yeah. of Deceit, who's this kind of like traveling relic hunter and, you know, Merchant. peddler of yeah. artifacts and trinkets and things like that. And, 
and 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 a devotee devoted to the the path of the, the open the open hand. So he's he's in the mother's pocket. He's sus. Yeah, yeah, he he's totally <laughs> sus. Yeah. Can I can I just mention? I mean, we've mentioned it numerous times, but I just I love the name of of that cult, the path of the open hand. Yeah, it's such a great name. It's, it's so, so evocative of just yeah. like we're good, we're totally chill, and we welcome everyone. But also and like, like and like most cults, not really. <laughs> Yeah, but also in this first issue, like, uh, there are basically a relic's been stolen from the shrine of Sharaf, and there's a dead mm-hmm. body. And it's like, at the end of this issue, you see Radagaz Dobbs just all smiles, but has nothing to do with that. Don't worry about it. And then, you yeah, know, yep. uh, there's an artifact deal in the second uh, issue, and it's like, he's not there either. But we know he does deal in artifacts, yeah. like. If you've read the path of sure deceit, does. So it's yeah. rewarding yeah. to the readers. If you've read the books and you're like, oh, he's actually he's actually pretty dastardly. If you've read that book, and so you know that yeah. he's going, he he probably he could be the culprit here. Yeah, that's that's what I always like want to point out to people who are you know should I dip my toe into yeah. the higher public? The the short answer is yes, and then the, the longer answer is because I've had people go like, but there's so much of it. And I'm like, you can choose to read, like. Just the main books. Like, you could just read the main adult three novels. You'll totally get it. You're not going to miss anything. They're great stories. You can just read the comics. You could just, like, you can go as deep as you want with these things. And it's just, it's like, it's like a Stephen King. It's like reading Stephen King, right? Yeah. The more Stephen King you read, it's rewarding because you see like characters kind of coming in and out of stories. Yeah, intertwine. Intertwined. But if you don't know who they are, it doesn't take you out of it. It's not like one of those awkward moments in like a Marvel movie sometimes where my wife looks at me and like, she's like, could you just tell me what I just missed? Like, yeah. Should like, I care like, about that this is a moment? Yeah. 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 It's for me, it's kind of a setup that's going to be fun. But uh, for the reader, it's like you probably aren't catching on to this yet or exactly. that character at least, yeah. which is cool. Yeah. But it's so it fun to see them walk two through. different viewpoints. And I think it's, it's exactly it's, it's anyone can read these comics. Just you can start here if you want to and then read the books afterwards or whatever. Whatever. You want. Yeah. Uh, it's all great. Um, yeah, so this second issue, Tay Sarek is instantly one of my favorite characters. I love this guy. I think he's so cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's like Dark Side, or what are you talking about? I loved that where he turned the tables so quickly on these two on uh, Vildar, especially. Uh, Craden Mins, the little cr- cricket guy. Oh right, the cricket <laughs> dude. So cool. Yeah. I think that's like I can't I hope we get to see an insect like that in live action at some point. He looked dude, so funny looking. Um, yeah, he was cool. That was Yeah, cool. we definitely need a we definitely need like a we definitely need an insectoid yeah. character. <laughs> and and like and and that's not me just trying to get Zuckus in here. Yeah. Oh, by the way, uh, my daughter, uh, I read a little golden book, Empire Strikes Back every night, because it's her favorite of all oh. nine, which by the way. Did not cause that. My daughter just has really good taste. And there's a scene with the with the bounty hunters, and she can now name all the bounty hunters except one. Can you guess which one she doesn't know the name of? Dengar. Dengar. Yes. You refused I did to not... have that. She heard say nope. that. Uh, uh, nope. That all I did happened not organically. do that. <laughs> it, first, she to ordered the book on Amazon by herself. No, no. Right? That's you were like, like, and I then all the that. bounty hunters stood there. There was Boa Fett, Boss. No. Nope. Uh, I, I swear to God. <laughs> Oh. She would point. She points and goes, "Who's that?" And I would just say, "That's Dengar. Who's that? That's IG88." <laughs> and tonight she's going through. She's going she's the first thing, Zuckus, and then Forlom, and then she did it. And she goes, "Who's that?" I go, "Who is that?" She goes, "I don't know." And I'm like, "Oh, oh. I love you, kiddo. You, know you are what? my daughter." Children see a lot more than you think they do. I know. She okay? heard. She heard it. She just could feel there's it. Nonverbals. Yeah. There's a yeah, lot cues. of things that kids yeah, yeah. pick up on. Um, cause yeah. have I think to. we just want more salacious B crumb type aliens is what we're a hundred percent. Right. Yeah, like exactly. the cricket guy here, Craden just felt like that. And I was like, we need it's more. So it's such a great character. weird, but sort of like, uh, I don't know. They're sort of like, um, morally gray or, or I guess chaotic, chaotic, people. Sort of like, yeah. you know, like creature yeah. puppets. <laughs> and yeah. what's interesting, like too, Bobo Freak was old... chill. I almost want like unchill yeah. and in your face. No, agreed. Be and, crumb, in the, like, annoying. and in the old, the old EU, uh, I think it was like, I can't remember where it fell because these books are blending together. But after like, when we got to like Legacy of the Forest era, so we're dealing with like, like Jaden and 
Jaina and Ben and Ben Skywalker and all these ben. these next generation. <laughs> there's um a couple of the main bad guys are like insectoids. And I love how they write it because it's just so inhuman. Like, it's the most inhuman thing you can think yeah. of. And then trying to figure them out, right? Like, it just, they can't relate because they can't read body language. They don't understand an insectoid mind. Like, it's just such great, it's such a great sci-fi trope of just like, That's so cool. they're just unsettling and unnerving. Right, they're like, I don't understand you. And they're like, but we also, just like, made seen, these like, Baby brownies. Yoda and Babu Frick just yeah. kind of <laughs> chilling there and hanging out. Like, I almost want to see what something looks like that's like jumping at you or like shouting at you. Yeah. Running towards yeah. you. Yeah. Give us, give us more than <laughs> a giant little guy. mosquitoes. A little guy in, who's uh, like in episode seven. Yeah. Terrifying. Oh, man. Yeah, this cricket was awesome. Um, yeah. And Tay Sarek's a pretty cool character. Uh, I love Vildar's lightsaber. We get a lot of panels of Vildar's saber, and it's like the sick sort of like uh, oh, that's like wild. Here looking like has this cool cur- like sort of like classic uh, cross guard. I love that thing. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. It's like more like a rapier, like a yeah, like a fencing sort of so fist cool. guard, um, which is pretty cool. Probably won't help you against the lightsaber, but you never know. Um, mean, yeah, it's a nice know. design. I love that that people that love lightsabers are now getting able to design their own, and the designs are inspired. They're, they're yes, like, yep, a lot of great designs, a lot of cross guard lightsabers going on, which is kind I, of fun. I'm really getting into the cross guard, and I didn't think That's, I would, but I'm it was just, crazy. I'm really enjoying that it. In fall in Jedi Survivor, uh, I was ex- like, you can Survivor, get Survivor, I know. Cool. What? Yeah, <laughs> and like you said, Ben, I really do hope that they change up fighting styles when you're using the cross guard. I mean, there's yeah. no difference in the weight because there's no weight to it. But I do <laughs> hope you're swinging it like, like you said, like a battle axe or, or like a, a, a broadsword or something Claymore, like that. Claymore, yeah. Claymore, yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, um, two-handed longsword. That would be. Yeah. Uh, anyway, well, anyways, we get to we finally get past this whole bar scene and we get to that deal, the back alley deal. We get that same alien that we got. In Obi Wan, the same. Oh yes, <laughs> with a weird snout. It's like yeah. kind of like an anteater snout. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's right. right. Um, and then we go to the Temple of the Kyber, also called the Temple of the Wills, mm-hmm. which is like that crazy landmark, the, the giant structure in the center of Jeddah. Oh, City. that's the yeah that that yeah. mimics um, Vader's castle. Like Vader's it's kind of like yeah, it kind of looks like Vader's castle when you think about it. And they go inside. That's pretty awesome. Like we're actually going inside that thing. It looks like a giant archive. Yeah, this is the Guardian of the Wills. This like... is so. What's going on here, guys? Like, is this is this like George Lucas's Wills? Is this like, like what are we get into? What it. Are, who are the Guardian of the Wills? Past the robes and past the sort of like initial followers and and sort of believers and sort of uh, guardians or militant figures. Like, who are the deep deep believers or what are the stories like? Are we going to get into that or are they going to just sort of like, is it wills in name only and they just sort of worship the force? And right. We don't so really get, if, we don't get a lot of those like stories or like lore exchange. We should let the listeners know who the wills are or remind them just in case. Yeah. So the, the wills, this was what, <laughs> what George Lucas's sequel trilogy was going to be about. And essentially the wills are, we're, we're going to be a very microscopic sentient species that, governed the force and like balanced the force like it was they were the conductors of it but they were microscopic like right they were like tiny yeah also like in there isn't in his first drafts of star wars wasn't always like stories from the wills or from something the will like yeah yeah star yeah, wars the wills, yeah. like yeah. uh the first you know, draft of a new well, hope I think yeah was, yeah like it's yeah. so yeah. weird like it always felt like it was that the wills were sort of like the central lore keeping either like or like or like extra galactic or like yeah, I don't or, know. Or like well, multi you know, multi dimensional beings. Yeah. Like it's really unclear. And they and they weirdly talk about it in um from the certain point of view books. Yeah. Like both of them end with a chapter from the perspective of the wills, which is more mostly written for comedy's sake. Oh but they're very strange. They're very weirdly written. It's clearly clearly just like these godlike beings observing what's happening in in but it looks like they're it looks like they're being downgraded into like the maesters of the star wars galaxy or something you know what i mean I, or or these are the people that believe in the most right like it seems like the jedi by the time we see them in 
episodes one, two, and three, their perspective of the force is more science connected with the midichlorians. I know we could, I, I mean, I don't want to open that can of worms, but we do get the midichlorians yeah. mentioned a few times, right? By both Yoda or both by, um, uh, Qui Gon oh, and and yeah, uh, Darth Plagueis or Darth uh, or Darth Sidious in Episode Three, right? Like you get both of those things going on, and then I wonder if the 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 you know the Guardians of the Wills are people that believe in like no no it's not midichlorians it's these it's it's mini it's these other beings right Microbes. these gods yeah yeah what are the gods. wills like what is a will like a W H I L L what is a good question I yeah. Well, it's, yeah, it's is same. someone ever going to like drop some knowledge on that word? No, I hope not. <laughs> don't don't ever. Like yeah, that's so I don't we'll get any of it. I bet we'll get the Guardians of the Wills, but I bet it's like the kind of thing where the Guardians of the Wills are like, listen, we know the real deal about the Force, right? I mean, they all probably yeah. do that. But I bet they've never met a will or communicated with a will or like have yeah, ever. To me, the it. wills were always like the Mortis people or something. They're like the yeah. wills or something like that. Yeah. yeah. That's that's know. the way I like like Filoni's like, let's just make the, you know, this happen. But I mean, that all could have the mortis could be microscopic and you go through like a space. I mean, time. But that's what's thing. interesting yeah. about the path of the open hand, because like the leader is called the mother. And I'm like, there's no mother in that story. It's kind of like the unfulfilled part yeah. of the narrative, I guess. I, do you want do you want the current canon description of the wills from Wikipedia? Short. I can read it to you. It is really short. Yeah, let's hear it. Yeah. The Wills were a community of beings who notably wrote the Journal of the Wills, a document that recorded important events in the galaxy as well as philosophical reflections in verse. There they, uh, there were shamans among them, one of whom taught Jedi Master Qui-Gon Jinn the ability to retain one's consciousness after death required absolute selfishness. So there is a bit of contact. Um but that's like that's through the databank. So the data, so the Star Wars databank, their bio, his Qui Gon's biography does mention that happened. So that's, wait, did that's you say like he weird... achieved? Sorry, I have to go back for a second. Uh, Qui Gon Jinn achieved um, the like, ability to retain con one's consciousness, so basically become a Force ghost. Like he learned, but how did he do that? that will. By being more selfish or selfless? Self, uh, selflessness. Okay. Self selflessness. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that makes more sense. I do remember at the end of Clone Wars, Yoda does meet those Force priestesses, and it's yeah. the Wills worship them. Like, is that who they so worship? They, yeah. I mean, this sounds like the Wills are like mostly just like you said, maesters. Like they chronicle it. But yeah. There one yeah. that was yeah. more of a, um, I don't know, some sort. Of what are they guarding though? Just the archive there, like all the sacred the journal force relics. Wait, so if all the Force relics are here, the mother probably is obsessed with this place. Yeah, she probably. probably wants yeah. all of these things in this building. Yeah. I mean, so so let's 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 look at our naming convention so far. And I mean, like core world news naming convention. Uh, Starlight Beacon Bulletin was our was our was our name for phase one. <laughs> uh, that did not turn out well for Starlight Beacon. We've we've rested on Jedha Jamboree for phase two. So, yeah, my guess is that things are not going to go well for Jedha. In, in in these phases is that there's going to be some you know i think there might be a bit of a you know we're not yeah. going to destroy it like we do in in rogue one but i think i think you know it's not going to go well right the city we know survives uh yeah still a new hope yeah. but um it, it does look like the countryside took a licking right uh, well, the uh, statues but, right maybe someone yeah. can hit a statue and it falls over Oh, is the totally. statue erect right yeah. now? Like, yeah, it, it, I bet you it is. I bet you'll see it. I think you. I think you yeah. nailed it, Grant. I think we're gonna yeah. see that the falling of the one had of the fallen. statue. Yeah, was it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so there'll be some of that, but yeah, we'll see. We'll see how things end up on old Jedi. It'll be fun. I, I can't wait because wait, with some news we we did learn that the Jedi once ruled over Jedi, like the holy city of Jedi and all that stuff. It is it is the Jedi holy site? I guess as well. Like first and foremost, yeah, right? Like. And they once ruled it. I was like, that is so cool. Like, yeah. what what did that look like? Like, that felt like a whole era, basically. Yeah. Yeah. That's what's so cool about this timeline. It's so long. They can just, it's just like cultures on top of cultures on top of yeah. cultures. Keep, keep jumping yeah. back. Yeah. yeah. Keep digging down. I think they talked in um, Convergence about the ruins underneath Coruscant. Which yeah, they did. Awesome. did. They, they did. Uh, You're right. Yeah, that might be the Sith Temple, right? The, Axel the was like, "The ruins in yeah. Coruscant," but like, no one yeah. would like want to go there or whatever. Right. 
I think they were. I think that might be the Sith Temple that's below the Jedi Temple that's on Coruscant. But it could yeah. be something else. Yeah. I love me a good uh, Force Temple somewhere. Me too. There. Yeah. Um. All right, Rad. Um, I'm feeling pretty good about this uh, roundy uppy. Uh, this was a, a fun dive into High Republic. A uh, Yoda one. Also, quick High Republic story. It goes back to the High Republic era. He basically uh, uh, tells the Council he'll go intervene. We're in this this planet where the natives are being accosted by, I guess, some, some sort of war band. And he stays on the planet to sort of ensure that there's peace there. And it's sort of a lesson about patience. It's a beautiful story. Uh, yeah. It's Yoda, Yoda number one. Uh, it's, it's also a High Republic sort of tale. Oh, wait, so did this just come out? Yep. Uh, yeah, yeah. Is it, ago, so yeah. is it phase one Yoda or is it phase two Yoda? It's like, uh, I guess it's near prequel era Yoda reflecting on High Republic days. I guess. Yeah, it's Yoda. Yeah, it's Yoda uh, and Dagobah or it's Swamp reflecting. Yoda. It's, no, it's actually OT Yoda oh, reflecting. Dagobah. Yeah, but he's like yeah. thinking Dagobah about Yoda. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, cool. But and, he did get some a ghost. A ghost is yeah. pestering him, and I think it's probably Qui Gon. Right. Yes, I am assuming. Yeah, it's really a fun read. Um, and I'm or really looking forward to it because it, it, it could be. I don't know. Like, do you have a, no, it can't be. It can't. He can't. Yeah. Gonna, he's not giving. But up. if Qui Gon was the first, then you know. Yeah. But they also play with the idea that he has a very long lifespan. Like it's almost played with here. He's like, I just he discovers not to ruin it, but he's like, he's gonna stay in a planet for as long as it takes. And for me, well, that, when yeah, Yoda that says was something like that, the most beautiful message of the issue yeah. was that sometimes helping someone is like staying with them for as long as you need help. Just, they, you yeah, need, they need just your being help there. basically. That's it. And it's he's just like, I'm there. just gonna yeah. be here as a support as system long as they for need this it. planet yeah. for as long as they need it. Which when you're yeah, a Yoda, I was like that's what like, help could be fifty yeah. years. And, and actually, yeah, yeah, exactly. And when you your life is that long, you can give people a couple of years or whatever and be like, a yeah, couple I'll decades. Help you yeah. yeah, even yeah. yeah, a decade and be like, yeah. I'll make sure it's safe here, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it's it's actually a really beautiful little it's so, it really is. Yeah, it's it's so well written. Nice. That's Kevin Scott again, I think. So is it? Yeah, I didn't check the, the writer, but I I think you're right. He's been busy. Yeah, that's Kevin Scott. Uh Man. And Nico, Nico Leone, the, the artist, is crushing it. It's oh, it's so and good. You get the Jedi Council of the High Republic era, and it's like the setting sun on Coruscant, and I don't want to yeah. spoil the panels. They're like the most beautiful panels I've ever seen. Yeah. I'll have to pick Yoda that up. number one. Pick that up. And I, yeah, I'm really looking forward to the um, the Blade, which is about Porter Engel. He was fascinating in phase oh, one, um, and so I guess yeah. this will be his early life, and uh, I can't wait to see his, yeah. his exploits. Coming out in a couple of weeks, I think. First issue. Cool, 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 cool. Um, Adam, do you know offhand what we'll be covering next week on Core World News? I, do, I don't. Um, I know it's not helpful, oh, but yeah, we're right. holiday special, guys. Oh yeah, yeah. All right, so there will be games next week. Um, it will not be a retrospective, but we're going to probably do a little dive in bet- between all the synergy of probably everything uh, we've been talking yeah. about recently. It's going to be a tantalizing debate. About <laughs> a certain prophecy that we haven't. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. 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 All right. So we won't spoil it, but um, it will be a fun episode next week. Um, I hope yeah. you all are enjoying uh, the High Republic as much as we are. Um, and take it easy out there. Um, we'll talk to you next week, and may the force be with you. This is Grex Kondak signing off. For the latest breaking news, follow at Core World News on Twitter and Instagram. Thank you, and good night. Remember. Force will be with you always. <laughs>